Hello and welcome to our first webinar in 2024. So welcome from the Netital office. So I'm basically not alone in this webinar. So I'm doing the webinar, of course, with, with our dear friend Frederick Villure. So hi, Frederick from Hong Kong. Hi, Roland. How are you? Everything OK? Everything OK. So weather is getting quite nice today, so I guess. So for you, how was the weather? Because for you, it's the afternoon, I guess. Yes, actually, it's uh, okay. We had a nice blue day. It's uh, 20, 21 degrees, something like that. So not too bad for our, for the time of the year. So we will today start with the AVC or AVR uh, X6800, depending on which region you're in. So certain regions like the US and also Taiwan will have the North American version. But we specifically will talk about the 6800 from now on because it's much easier to reference. So. Without further ado, let's get going. So a few upgrades, of course, from the 6700. The 6800, just like the predecessor, is also made in Japan, in Shirakawa. So we get the best high build quality and the performance that we're used to from the Denon engineers. So engineered to perfection, best in class audio performance. Uh, by the way, we saw in Shirakawa last year during our product workshop, a room with a few competitor models set up with the lids off next to ours. And it's very obvious that we are leading in all classes in terms of component layout, the build quality, the wiring, the design compared to competitor models. So the 6800, just like the 6700, is a monolithic design. So all the channels are nicely stacked one by one, separated from each other and attached to a massive heatsink. I will show a few slides later to illustrate exactly what that means. So even though it has 11 amplifiers built in, the amp is capable to process 13.4 channels, four being the subs, and you would need, of course, an external amplifier to power the two last channels. Then the front white channels are also supported from this model up. The DAC is new. And so is the PCB where the DAC is mounted. So many components have been tuned and swapped out for higher hi-fi grade components to get to the exact sound that Yamauchi-san and Yuki-san or Denon Sound Masters wanted. So as we mentioned in the earlier webinars, uh, Dirac is not replacing Odyssey. It's an additional choice that we're offering, a paid option. In addition to Odyssey, which already comes out of the box building in our AVRs. In addition to the Dirac room correction, a separate option base control is now also available for a base optimization. So base control will help you improve the base performance and the consistency throughout your listening area, whether you're using a single or multiple subwoofers. Now, for those interested, we have a separate webinar on our Massimo Training YouTube channel. Our core values, we always endeavor to have the latest connectivity. We support the latest formats to get you the best quality and the best user experience. Onto the front panel yeah. here of the premium silver finish. Not much difference from the 6700 as most buttons in this class are hidden behind a trap door. You probably have a hard time seeing the difference at all if it wasn't for the silk screen model number on the front. However, from the back, you can see quite a few changes. So let's go from the top to bottom. We changed some naming labels to make it more obvious. We no longer call the HDMI output monitors, but we call it TV instead. Speaking of HDMI, we use the HDMI board of the A1H. So in yellow there, the seven HDMI inputs all support 8K, and that's 120. We've got three HDMI outputs, two of them supporting 8K, and then the zone output supports 4K. We made that also very clear with the labeling. And the TV1 is also the EARC input to get the TV sound signal into the receiver. We've reduced the composite video inputs to just two for legacy devices and there's only one component video RGB input. There's a five volt, that's new, five volt, one and a half amp dedicated USB power supply, that's in purple, 
for example, for a Amazon Fire HD stick or any other media sticks, for example, a Chromecast dongle. So powering is very clean and very easy. In red, you will see the preamp analog outputs and the zone two and three analog outputs if you prefer to use external amplification. Then next to it in blue, you have four subwoofer outputs of which the fourth can be assigned to output the signal to a tactile transducer or butt kicker. And then in the green square, there's three 12 volt DC triggers, one additional one. So these can be used to trigger external amplifiers, projector screens, curtains, etc. And the last on the left side of that, we've labeled the phono inputs with MM. So it's very clear that we're supporting moving magnets and that you will need an external phono stage if we're using a moving coil cartridge. The power amp modules uh, in their monolithic construction. So on the left there, you can see how they stacked each of the 11 amplifier modules one by one next to each other attached to the heatsink. So all the amp PCBs are neatly stacked for the shortest signal path. And on the right side there, you can see how they manufactured these AMP modules, these AMP PCBs, all printed and soldered on a single plate, and then they cut it up in separate boards along the perforation lines. A little bit more about the DSP, uh, which we've completely changed. We used two Shark Plus DSPs in the 6700s that executed 800 MIPS at 450 megahertz each. We're now using a single upgraded Shark Plus DSP, the Griffin Lite XP, that runs to 1000 MIPS at one gigahertz to process 13.4 channels with extra room to add more technologies in the future. So that's why we're able to run direct live in addition to Odyssey Multi QXT32 on the newer AVRs. And for those who are wondering, MIPS stands for million instructions per second and is used to measure the speeds of the CPUs. Okay, moving on. As we mentioned several times now, the 6800 supports up to 13.4 channel processing or up to 7.4.6 speaker layouts for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, RO 3D, allowing for an even more seamless surround sound experience in larger rooms. Odyssey Multi-EQ XT32 also supports up to 13.4 channels of calibration out of the box. And so there's support for both top, middle and center heights, top surround speaker layouts, the top middle for Atmos, and then top middle center height, top surround for Auto 3D, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced. The Dolby Atmos top speaker layouts, top front, top middle and top rear, now can also be used for Auro 3D playback. That wasn't the case before, we've added this now. So we get a lot of questions why we can't add Direct Live to previous generation AVRs. It, Direct Live obviously uses a lot of computing power, and now with the, all of the DSP chips, unfortunately are not capable to handle that amount of processing. Another upgrade versus the base model, we now support four subwoofers with a more advanced base management system. You know, sometimes, depending on the room size, a single sub may cause too much stress or uneven base. So adding additional subs allows for more even base performance in different listening positions. The ideal, everyone knows that, is of course to have a single sub in every corner. Also, other than the standard mode, we now also have directional subwoofer modes, but this is applicable for Odyssey only. For Direc, we recommend that you use the standard mode. Comparing the 6700 on the right with the 6800 on the left, the HDMI board design concept is inherited from the A1H. You can see a heatsink has been attached for all the HDMI chipsets also for the DSP and the HEARS module. And we also added a copper plate between the heatsink and the power transistors. More about that later. If we compare with the 4800, uh, its sibling on the right and the 6800 on the left, 
you can see the additional heat sink on the top right corner there that we added to the DSP for extra channels of processing. Our mission to get the best audio quality, our engineers redesigned the 6800 from the bottom up with the experience that they gathered when designing the A1H and the 4800, and then used some of their design concepts in the 6800. So we'll go through step by step. Let's have a look at the DAC PCB first. So the DAC PCB in the 6800 is complete upgrade from the 6700. We now use a dedicated DAC PCB with two H-channel DA converters from the ESS brand, DSS Sabre series. So the DACs are the ones in the red square. And on the right close-up, you can clearly see a set of eight channels supporting each uh, of the DACs. So by each DAC will have eight. On the left, you can see two of those. So that's 16 channels. Uh, there's an additional DAC in the yellow square for the fourth subwoofer. We in fact use the same methodology that's found on the A1H to cleverly implement the DAC chips to provide the 13.4 channels of equal sound quality. And I think Roland will cover more about the current output DA converters in a moment during his Marantz Cinema 30 section. So our main goal is shortest signal path possible. Why? In order to minimize loss, interference, distortion. So for that, the engineers redesigned the signal flow. On the right here, you can see the 4800. Uh, you can see the DAC and the analog audio section are combined, right? They're merged on the same board. The DAC part is actually the darker area. So to use current output DAC on the 6800, which has an advantage as a DA conversion circuit, we have to use large area post filter circuit. So the post filter circuit is the area circled here in orange. The blue circle area are the DAC chips. Because for the current DAC type, the current output DAC type, we have to use large area post filter circuit. We now on the 6800, use a dedicated DAC PCB to house the DAC and the post filter circuit. So instead of using a flat cable to connect the digital and the analog PCBs, we also use connection boards to transmit the audio signal from the DAC PCB to the volume at C, which is in itself on the analog PCB. So again, a directly connected board is the shortest route versus a cable. We have a slide later on in the chassis construction where you can clearly see the difference between the rear board structure compared to a flat cable connection. Right here, we compare the signal path on the analog PCBs between the volume IC, the thin red line boxes, and the selector IC. Those are the thin blue line boxes. Now, since the 6800 now has a dedicated DAC PCB, we're now able to redesign the signal flow from the analog PCB to create a shorter flow. So if you have a look here, I think everyone can see the mouse. The analog input on the 6700 goes first through a selector, input selector IC. Then it goes to the volume IC, the output selector, and then to the power amp. Same for the digital PCB. It goes from the bottom here to the uh, input selector. Again, the same route all the way down. What we've done on the 6800 right here, the digital PCB, so that's the analog that's coming from the DAC, enters right here directly, goes through the volume IC and then the output selector IC. And that's the same for the analog input, the selector input, uh, the input chip first, and then the volume IC and then the output selector IC. So you can see with the new board layout that the signal coming from the DAC from the volume IC via the shortest route compared to the 6700, that delicate analog signal path is now much shorter. And at the same time, we have the same audio quality for all the channels. Then moving on to the power amp section, same fully discrete monolithic construction as we said before as the 6700. So each channel has its own PCB for better channel separation. So all the left channels grouped on one side, all the right channels grouped on the other side. 
with the sixth channel there being the center. Where there was also no copper plate in the 6700, we now use a one millimeter thick copper plate between the heat sink and the PCBs, which improves heat dissipation and guarantees stable power amplification. So the use of a copper plate separating the heat sink and the MPCB, that's a concept that was first used in the 8500s. They used a two millimeter copper plate and the AVC A1 for reference uses a four millimeter thick copper plate. So literally premium grade approach here. So comparing the power amp block between the 6800 on the left and the 4800 on the right, you can clearly again see the new copper plate has been added and a larger heatsink than that of the 4800 has been adopted. So the power of amplifier connection boards are now placed on the side rather than on the top. So it doesn't interfere with the warm air that goes up. So we have very effective heat dissipation. Then here, the power transistors, we worked with the manufacturer to consider many types of materials and chip sizes. And we adopted a new transistor that achieves high sound quality. Compared to the current products, the package, as you see, is now larger with higher reliability since we can get better transient heat concentration. And then, of course, in addition to changing the transistors, we also thoroughly reviewed the power supply pattern and the signal pattern on the power amplifier board in order to suppress mutual interference. Uh, I will show that pattern in the next slides. So also here, we have optimized the circuits and the components to realize good audio characteristics for low noise and low distortion. So many of the custom parts like the film caps, the electrolytic caps, and of course the new power transistors, they were carefully selected by the sound master. And with all these upgrades, we have achieved a higher sound quality, lower distortion than the 6700 and the 4800. Let's have a look at the power transistor layout I mentioned before. So as mentioned earlier, we changed the way we mount the transistors. So now on the 6800, to prevent thermal interference from the other channels, the transistors are separated for each channel and mounted alternately. And now we also use a one millimeter thick copper plate and a newly developed high heat conductivity installation sheet so that the heat of the transistor is instantly diffused so that we get stable operation. And then in addition, the two power transistors in one channel are mounted close together to improve the temperature compensation accuracy. So the heat radiation using copper plates and the alternate mounting are the same concept that's used in the A1H. And of course, with all these channels, we need a very good and stable power supply. So also here, we custom made our power capacitors or block capacitors to get them to the exact specifications that we need. Compared to the 4800, we've increased the diameter of the custom power caps with about 10 millimeters, so more space to store valuable energy, meaning they can charge quickly and release energy at high speed for powerful sound expression. And it's the same story with the power transformer. This is also custom made for us more windings on the EI core transformer here. Uh, not only increases the weight, obviously, but we can deliver more stable current, which is then stored in the power caps. And then lastly, the improved chassis construction. So as we mentioned earlier, the 6800 uses connection boards. Uh, these are indicated with the yellow arrows here instead of wires or flat flexible cable, FFC they call them, for the connections between the digital PCB and the audio PCB. On the 6700 on the right there, you see the three connections in the red square, they use that flat cable. Now, since the rear connection board structure on the 6800 has been made more solid, it's less susceptible to vibrations, so we get improved reliability. Anyone servicing these boards know what a pain it is 
to remove these flat cables. So servicing is made much easier as well now. Now to support the heavy transformer and the radiator unit, the main chassis is made of the same thickness, 1.2 millimeter as the A1H. The transformer weighs about 5.3 kilo and the radiator itself is 2.2 kilo. And then the chassis alone is already 2.3 kilo. So it inherits the double layer chassis construction and the vibration suppression feet from the 6700, although the feet have been upgraded as well. Also new is the additional box shaped bottom cover. So that's a double layer chassis, but three pieces now, the main chassis, the radiator base and the additional bottom cover. And all these together are very effective in improving the rigidity of the chassis. So that's crucial for good performance. Let's talk a little bit about technologies. DDSC HD32. So this is unique to Denon, a digital circuit with discrete chips instead of a multi-purpose IC that other brands use. So all the surround channels are processed in 32 bit. It actually started off as a 24 bit circuit and we have now evolved into 32 bit called HD32. So doing this processing improves the audio performance. So this direct discrete surround circuit HD32 is equipped with separate AD converter, a DSP and lastly a DA converter. You can see the DSP and the DAC operate in 32 bit. So whereas Marans will use HDAM circuits in the analog domain to do various kinds of filtering, Denon uses this technology in the digital domain. And Roland will talk a little bit later about HDAMs in his part. We also developed a new type of multi-channel volume circuit ID that is suitable for hi-fi grade sound in AVR. So we collaborated with a Japanese company to develop a special volume chip. We also optimized the board layout and the signal path by making the selector as a separate chip to get us that energetic and stable sound. Other brands will often combine the volume and the selector I chip, so we use discrete chips instead. That's the same concept as the A1H and the 4800. Also unique to Denon is the alpha processing. Uh, which was developed as a high sound quality technology for pure audio that expands 16 bits and 24 bits into 32 bits for playback. So when recording sound, this information lost when digitizing signals and storing them in the digital domain. So the AL32 processes large amounts of data for all the channels by using a proprietary algorithm to then interpolate all that lost data. So we can faithfully reproduce the original analog waveforms, resulting in enhancing the ability to reproduce micro detail. And again, same concept as the A1H and the 1400. So all the Denon premium AVRs will have that. Now the 6800 has been designed based on the development of our flagship, the AVC or AVR A1H. And along with our audio technique and the expertise of Takumi, our craftsmanship, Yamauchi-san, our Denon Soundmaster, and his team then perfected the Denon sound for the AVC 6800, described and as vivid and spacious. So typical Denon sound signature. Towards the end, we'll actually compare the two and explain a bit more uh, about differences in sound signature. I'm not going to read this all, but everything highlighted in red here is a significant change point from its predecessor. So seven HDMI inputs. We have upgraded the DSP, uh, the Griffin Light XP, four subwoofers, optional direct life and bass control. We've upgraded the DAC with an ESS Sabre. That's the ES9017S here. We've got two of those. We have preamp mode now per channel pair instead of everything on or everything off. Standard mode or directional mode, that's selectable. Transducer output for subwoofer four. We've upgraded the GUI to 1080p. And we also have a new HEOS module 
What's also interesting is you have auto transfer of the HEALS account. So if you onboard the 6800 for the first time, you open up your HEALS app. And when discovering, it will transfer your HEALS account and details through the app directly to the AVR. Everyone knows how cumbersome it is to use a remote control to type in passwords and such. We also have now the USB on the back, a 5 volt one and an A, and Bluetooth transmitter with volume control. So that's a Bluetooth transmission to headphones. You no longer need to control the volume from your headphones. You can do it on the remote, or you can do it using the option button on the front panel and three trigger outputs. So summary, AVC X6800, excellent product. It's outperforming the 8500H in terms of DSP and processing power. It's got a monolithic design, new power transistors, a copper plate, a new DAC board with ESS Sabre 32-bit premium DACs, Griffin Light XP DSP chipset, optional direct life in addition to the included Odyssey Multi QXT32, four independent subwoofers, new selective preamp mode in pairs, seven 8K HDMI inputs, and a new high-risk GUI, and the new top uh, HEALS network module. So that brings us to the end of this part. So Roland, I'm going to hand it over to you. So I'm gonna make yeah. you presenter. Thank you, thank you very much. So uh, in the meantime, so I can say, so where is the questions button on the, on the right uh, hand side of your, let's say, go to webinar overview because we do not have that many questions so far. Yeah, can you see my screen? Great, great. So thank you, thank you very much, Frederick. Um, and now, yeah, so now, now we are coming to the Cinema 30. So why we are doing Cinema 30 and the AVC X 6800H in one webinar? Because they have a lot of similarities, but they also have differences. And I, yeah, let's say I will focus on the differences now in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Great, so this is, uh, of course, Marantz. Marantz has completely let's say different sound philosophy but also this nice little cinema 30 is made in japan by the way frederick i love your japan logo so this nice little written written japan logo so i just have the flag in here so it's also built in the shirakawa works so and available in black and silver gold the main thing is for maras and this is a bit different to then on that this is the av amplifier flagship meaning it's a real flagship because you don't have any higher model, which is a complete integrated amplifier. Of course, you have the AV10 as the pre-amplifier and so on, but this really is the flagship here, the Cinema 30. So you have, of course, the new, yeah, let's say, very luxurious design and this typical Marans construction and the design which we have, let's say, since uh, since the model, model 30 in 2020. Um, since we introduced it in 2020, yeah. It is also sound tuned, of course, using really, really high grade parts by, um, of course, our, our Maran sound master Ogata-san, which uh, many of you, of course, know from, from, let's say, the webinars we had before and all these nice little differences we also stated before. Um, with uh, sound, with regard to sound philosophy. So this is just an overview about the features. I don't need to tell you that uh, all of that because you you heard most of of this. So because feature-wise, the AVC X6800 and the Cinema 30 do not really differentiate that much. Okay, so there is a different remote, there is a different design, but really the features, meaning the 13.4 channel signal processing, the 11 channel power amp in spec sheet, just to, to get the spec sheet is really, yeah, you can say it's, it's the same as with the 6800. Of course, we have different sound quality. This is what I already mentioned to you. But I will now deeper dive into the difference, which are, let's say, if you if you do a look um, behind behind, of course, the, the 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 top the top panel, so you will of course see a completely different different picture in here. So like this toroidal transformer, which is of course typical for Marans, but we will come later to this. Let's say let's first go a bit more structural into it, and let's start with the 
chassis and the construction itself. So you have at uh, some parts uh, with the transformer, so you have a um, uh, three layer chassis with additional insulation. So there's of course, there's the copper plated outer chassis, which you know from the 181815. Um, of course, there is the um, these, these has a few more enforcements uh, than the 1815. I will I will show you in the next slide. But when we have, of course, an additional layer for the power amplifier and for the toroidal transformer, and there's a third layer which is new uh, for the toroidal transformer, another reinforcement. And then you have these insulation plates which are of uh, aluminum because they need to insulate everything. And on this insulation plate, we have the toroidal transformer, the big toroidal transformer, which is typical for all the Marantz products, of course, uh, especially the, all the stereo products. Oh yeah, and if we talk about stabilization, of course, everything is stabilized with these nice little vibration resistant feet. So we have a real vibration resistant construction. And since the transformer is one of the most, yeah, let's say, sources of of uh, of also um vibration so it's really damped and it does not influence anything uh in the in the system so yeah so basically these kind yeah this kind of slide so you also had this kind of slide for the 6800 so um basically in the in the back area so we have one more we have uh, one more PCB to show, which is of course the HDEM PCB, because you don't want to find the HDEMs with the, the hyperdynamic amplifier modules with the Denon product. So this is typically, of course, this is typical to Marans, and I will talk in a minute about these uh, very, very important difference between the two. But let's um, come back to the to the chassis which we talked before so if we compare the chassis it's now 3.6 millimeter thick for the let's say the, at, at the side of a transformer so if we compare it to the AT15 which already had the copper uh yeah the, the copper plated chassis but it were only two layers uh there so it's uh, 2.4 millimeters thick and if you compare it to the usual steel chassis, which we use with the Cinema 40 or also with the Cinema 50, so this is only, um, they are, let's say, um, one point, uh, no, 2.2 millimeters thick. So we have a more vibration resistant structure in here. And of course, we have a lot more of uh, new uh, parts in here. So yeah, I will go into detail with the next slides. So we have, for example, as you can see, as a comparison with the Cinema 40, we have this toroidal transformer. As I, as I already told you, the toroidal transformer is, of course, has a, has a very, very low leakage flux, whereas such as the EI um, transformers has more, let's say, more pronounced leakage flux, and you need to shield them, and you need to build really big shields around this to not influence the other components in the remaining unit. So. Uh, because this is major source, of course, of noise. And uh, if you have a toroidal transformer, of course, the leakage flux is in a in a ring, so and will not go that outside. But in addition, this is also shielded uh, toroidal transformer, so where there is really, really, nearly no leakage flux in it. So for the Cinema 30, so it really features, let's say. Um, bigger much bigger block capacitors for example as the as the cinema 40 so uh, we are using here um 22000 microfarads whereas the cinema 40 only uses 15000 microfarads capacity which means um the higher the capacity of course the more energy i can drain from it yeah if the dynamic kicks in so you really need fast energy and this is pulled out of these capacitors. And as you can see, these capacitors are also more stable because they have four connectors. I have, I have one in my hand here with four connectors. Of course, you see it in here. We have, of course, the plus minus, and we have two which are stabilizing this um, capacitor. Whereas, let's say for the, for the Cinema 40, we, we, use, we use this with uh, only two connectors. It's, it's not that big, of course. Uh, this is much bigger, whereas 
this is why we need additional stabilization, but it's really, really more stable. And then it's also more vibration resistant, of course. Um, yeah, it's a completely different chemistry in it. So both is selected uh, thoroughly by our sound master, by Ogata-san, of course, and to, to get the most out of it. Yeah, so when we have, of course, the power amp, and it sounds a bit weird, but it's the first time Marans uses, also uses the copper plate between, let's say, the heat sink and the transistors. So um, as uh, Frederick already said, so Denon was using it with the A110 and with the A1H. So, but Marans, which is, of course, copper is one of the materials which gives rest to the sound because it's it's non-magnetic and it's really shielding material so and it it really gives rest to the sound and the maran's philosophy is of course musical it's really emotional and these rest is is really a a very very big uh thing in in this sound philosophy there but uh this of course this copper plate here is not because of sound philosophy, as, as Frederick already said. This is because of heat dissipation, because copper, yeah, is really, really has, has very, very good um, characteristics in here. And the heat is evenly distributed within milliseconds on uh, the, the, the heat sinks in here. And we have two separate heat sinks. This is, of course, clear. So we separate the left and the right channels in here. So meaning, uh, so we have more channel separation uh, than we have, for example, in a Cinema 40, or in, compared also to, to the 6800, which has similar structure than, similar 40, uh, than Cinema 40. In here. So for the duck board, so the duck board looks very, very similar to the Denon one. So we have just, just one uh, differentiation so in, the, um, uh, in the software. Because uh, for the software, so you can set two filter modes. So you can enable the typical Marans uh, musical filtering. So which is the, the default, which is the, is the filter one. And this enables, uh, let's say, a very, very smooth roll off of a frequency range. So you can see this um, in here. So which is a really smooth roll off in here. And this is typical, of course, for the, for our, for the Marans sound philosophy. While the mode two, which you can also switch to in a Marans uh, amplifier, um, is used as the default mode for this um, for this DAX in the Denon AVCX 6800, and this this is a more a mode, yeah, where where you can get your best measurement results. But as you know, measurement and sound are sometimes also different things, and since it is the Maran sound philosophy to get a real transparent and, and emotional sound. So of course the mode one is better fit to Maran's products. Yeah, so as you, as you said, this is uh, the, the following is present also in the 6800, uh, but yeah, also used here in the Cinema 30 and it's the new ESS DAC which is um, outputting not voltage. So usually, so you have ducts in two output modes, so you can really output straight from the duct the voltage. So when you have to define a minimum, which is zero and the maximum voltage, which is for example, two volts. And then you output a signal in between the uh, zero and two volts. But you have also, let's say current output ducts. And this is one of the current output ducts. And the current output ducts, they output the current in full scale. So it doesn't matter what the minimum, what the maximum is. So it, it really outputs in full scale of a current, which is uh, only limited by the duct itself. But yeah, so um, this, is, this is, of course, this gives you uh, principle-wise more headroom for uh, the signal. And uh, there's a downside, of course, of this type of, of digital analog converters. And the downside is you need more after the converter. So you need, of course, to convert this current into a voltage because you need to output voltage to get it, uh, to get it then to the, to the pre-amplifier. Um, and this is why we have so many parts, of course, on the duck board. This is also because the duck board is yet now it's completely separate from, from all the other boards. And um, we need to uh, convert these, let's say, current, of course, to, to a voltage. 
this voltage which then arises has a much more headroom than it would have if we would directly output in a voltage mode. Now we are going to the HDA M board, meaning to the hyperdynamic amplifier modules. And the hyperdynamic amplifier models are typical and only present, of course, for Varan's models. And you know them very well because, yeah, we talked about it with all the other cinema and the stereo products, of course. So what is it? So it's it's really, you know, it's it's uh, you can say at Denon there is an operational amplifier which is present, but for Marans, so we have this dedicated parts, uh, um, and uh, the advantage is, of course, if if you build the operational amplifiers with dedicated resistors with dedicated uh, capacitors so you can tune in every every part and each part so you can tune for example this nice little uh, um, capacitor in here this was done so it's not the same circuit let's say it uh, as with the with the cinema 40 and it's not the same circuit as with the AT15 although they also had HDM modules so really Ogata-san takes the chance to improve uh, model by model, so and improve from model to 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 the next model with the best parts available in this year, and this of course uh, leads to already to to always the best sound, to always the best Marans like sound, and it has measurably uh, also very very good effect because it has a much lower THD and a much higher signal to noise ratio. And of course, as you know this from all the other HTEMs um, we used in the past, it has a very, very high speed of amplification, meaning if dynamic kicks in, you are really nearly immediately there. So this, is, uh, this leads to a very, very rich and lively sound, you can say. So we are not using uh, the, the HDMs only in the pre-amplifier block, but also in the phono block to improve the phono section in here. So um, this is also very, very good to know, of course. So the analog block does not really differentiate from the AVC X6800H. So um, the only thing is these connectors, which are not present on the board of the 6800H, and these connectors lead to the HDM board. So this is rather the... The difference. Yeah, Frederick also talked about the pre-amplifier mode, and the pre-amplifier mode. Um, so is is a very very big thing, I guess, because it's uh, it's really so. If you are only using the pre-amplifiers, so it cuts off the power amplifier. So not it cuts the connection to the power amplifier. Let's say it like this. And due to the power amplifier, so is uh, connected to a speaker. There is some load, and this has some feedback and negative effect. Uh, usually has some negative effect to the output of your uh, pre-amplifier. But if it is completely cut from the power amplifier, so there's no such negative feedback and you can reach much lower THD at higher output voltages from your pre-amplifier output. So this is, of course, so you can cut it in here if you don't want to use the power amplifier for this channel. And then you can use the pre-amplifier in a much, much better quality for higher levels. So, yeah, now we are already, uh, let's say, not at the end, but this is a short overview, so you get all the slides, you can look at this, um, and of course, this is the nice little back panel, which also, let's say, you can see the copper chassis in here, the copper-plated chassis, and all these connections, which are rather, really, really similar, as I said before, to the 6800. Um, I mean... Also included some comparisons, of course, with the um, AT15 in here. So as you as you can see, so the typical uh, structure is rather yeah very similar to the AT15, as also already uh, Frederick pointed out with the 6800. Of course, we now have full 8K capability on all the inputs. So that's why these are cooled. We have the DSP, the new DSP, which runs a bit warmer. That's why it's cooled. And we have a new HEOS module. Also needs to be cooled a bit more efficiently than this one. So yeah, so we have, of course, the new power transistors with the copper plate in here, which is a difference, of course, with the 1850. So we also prepared, let's say, a chart where we have all these additional functionalities and the, the, the differences between the AT50 and the Cinema 30. So if you compare it to the Cinema 40, 
of course. So we have really, really done uh, nice, nice work in shielding signals. So we have, of course, a very, very good symmetrical construction, which is not present in here. So we have our toroidal transformer in the middle. So we have separated the two um, um, uh, amplifier blocks and we have shielded. So all the signal cables, which came from the pre-amplifier into the power amplifier in addition. So yeah, also here, small comparison. So you can look at it. So just, just need to, emphasize that we have a lot more capacity in here, so we have a lot more dynamic. And now we are coming to, let's say, um, of course, the, the comparison between the two we are talking about today. So we, we come to a comparison of Cinema 30 versus the ABC X6800H. So as you can see in here, so yeah, of course, the dimension is completely different. So it has much more depth due to this there is really a, a bit more, let's say, also structure in here. It's completely symmetrical. And this is, as you can see, not that symmetrical. You have the toroidal power transformer, which is, yeah, if you, if you just look at this PCB, of course, it looks really, really similar. Uh, but as Frederick said, so where is, for example, the alpha processing in the, in the Denon is active while the, the Marans is not featuring the alpha processing? But the Marans has another PCB in here, which you don't see because it's it's under the, the main main one in here, uh, under the HDMI one in here. Uh, one one small difference, of course, I have to I have to show you because you see this rather standard remote control for the Denon, uh, for the Marans, you have this nice little nice little remote control which is illuminated. So you press the button on the side and it's illuminated. And it's not the mold version, which comes with the Cinema 40. So it's really, it's the metal version, which comes with the AV10. And I guess this is, this is really a good thing. So what, what do you think, uh, Frederick? Anything to add? Uh, yes, there's a couple of things. Uh, and there's a couple of questions that are tying in with what I wanted to add as well. Uh, specifically in terms of sound signature, you mentioned filter one and filter two, for example. Uh, that wasn't in layman's terms. Uh, talking about roll-off is a little hard to to um, to put into context. So you could look at the filter one would be a more narrow. Look at it at a triangle, right? A triangle, a more narrow focused sound stage, a little bit more emphasis on the high frequency, and a bit more focus towards the center. I would say, whereas filter two has a much wider sound stage. Look at it at sort of a elongated diamond shape, a parallelogram like that. So, and then the sound stage being more wider would be more immersive and it would be a little bit more relaxed in the high frequencies. So you could say that filter two is suitable for music lovers, whereas filter one will probably be uh, more resonating with movie lovers. But then we talked about What's the difference between the signature between Marantz and, and Denon? Uh, so the vivid and uh, expansive versus the warm detail. So I, I took some notes from some listening sessions that I had earlier. And with the Marantz, I found that the dialogue uh, was a bit more richer, a bit more warmer, a bit more engaging, perhaps. And this was what a Odyssey calibration. So the background music sounded to me a little bit more prominent. The bass goes deeper because of the age down characteristics, of course. Uh, I felt there was a bit more immersion, a bit more emotion. And where if you then change and you do the Dira calibration, you get a completely total different character. With the same Marantz, it becomes more dynamic, uh, faster transients, and a bit more clean focus bass. So you would say that a um, Morales with the Odyssey calibrations suitable more for people who watch um, movies, I would say. Whereas if you tend to be a music fan and you're watching movie concerts, then the Dira calibration on the Morales is the ideal. And that's similar to Denon versus Morales. So I would say I started as a Denon fan myself. I had two or three AVRs before I even started working for this company. And uh, I liked it because I was watching a lot of movies, but I'm a musician 
And I was focusing on the music and all the details. So I thought when I did auditioned a Moran's AVR, I found out something completely different. So I really liked it. I felt the emotion. So I gravitated. And as you maybe get older, you change your tastes. I then started preferring the Moran's sound signature. And for that, uh, if you, again, are a music lover, I think you tend to gravitate towards the uh, Moran's sound signature. I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Mm. Yeah. What about you? It's yeah, it's it's great. So I, of course, I listened to the to the six thousand eight hundred, and honestly speaking, so I was overwhelmed from the from the from the quality, and also from from the step up uh, from the six thousand seven hundred. Um, and as I'm as I am looking for, let's say, a successor in in a home cinema, so I would I would really really grab the the six thousand eight hundred in my uh, in 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 this in this sense so but i fully fully can understand why someone wants to have the cinema 30 because he is really he wants uh, let's say it everything and he can he can do everything and uh, um especially of course he has the most yeah he has the real musical sound and if you switch back let's say to direct mode for the marans so you can really listen to this typical stereo maran sound because i guess so the, the the intention of a sound master for the cinema 30 was also to have this let's say to to have this typical sound which is found with for example a model 50 in a in a real amplifier in a real uh, um, multi-channel amplifier so to have this sound corrector to to have this emotional sound corrector which you, which you find in your stereo products in a, a cinema series products, I guess the Model 30 is the way to go. Uh, but of course, if you are really more into into looking for for cinema sound, and I don't listen usually that much to music, I would grab the 6800, and it will fit my shelf. While the Cinema 30 is really, really a deep thing. <laughs> say like. well, it's a matter of it's a matter of taste for sure. I mean, CI installers probably will prefer the six to eight hundred because of the depth. So it's easier to install, and uh, somebody who likes to show off a nice piece of product will, of course, go for the Cinema uh, Thirty and put it right there, visible to everyone. It's a different approach, a different taste, and that's what we care about. This is why we're offering two different products in different price ranges with different sound signature. If if you want to implement it in your living room, uh, I would really prefer Cinema 30. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a stunner. It looks really beautiful with the sights and everything. So uh, I think in the meantime, while we had this discussion, we've answered about four or five questions regarding these sound signature and whether in two-channel uh, listening can be used. A um, couple of questions about some upgrades for the HEOS. Will we get Deezer Hi-Fi with the Heels module? <laughs> yeah, you know it. So because, yeah, it, actually it's planned, but you, you never know when it will come, of course. So it's planned. It's not planned in the f for the far future. It's rather planned for, for the near future. But as, as, we, as we experienced in the past, so we, we cannot really state a complete date in here. But we can say this, that this is definitely on our list for the near future yes and it's a similar question for um things like tidal connect uh, tidal high res this is all coming up it's all on the roadmap cobus it's all there on the roadmap some of them will come earlier yeah that's true but frederick what we can say is of course what we this year we really really focus on this high resolution music services i guess this this is a very general thing and and we can say what we what we try to get our very best to get everything which has to do with high resolution music services uh, we we will implement or try to implement this year. Yeah. Yes, for the uh, 6800 outperforming the 8500. Um, we already mentioned that in terms of processing power, uh, DSP it's superior. Uh, like you have the new GUI, you have the HD GUI, all the HDMI's are there. You can have the Dirac option. Is there anything else that you can add, Roland? So of course, so if you compare the 8,500 8, 8, uh, with the 6,800, so there is a, let's say, huge step, of course, in between, because as you, as you know, the 8,500 8, was engineered in 2017. 
some something like that. So and uh, yeah, you had an upgrade, but this upgrade was adding, let's say, HDMI 2.1, which was great to 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 have this upgrade. But in the meantime, so you have so many additional features which will not make the way ever in the 8500. So and uh, also we learned, let's say, how how to how to get real uh, this this sound of our 8500 and later on the A110 to get this sound, let's say, in classes like the 6800. So, um, yeah, that's why I think the 6800 is really, really worth a listening and compare it to the, to the, to the 8500. Yes. And uh, for the Marantz lineup, the Cinema 30 is, in fact, the flagship if you consider the integrated AVR. We still have AV10 and M10 as separate components, but that's definitely uh, a step up. So let's see if there's any other, because we have a couple minutes left. How does the Cinema 30 compare to the SR8015? Yeah, so I guess we made the, the comparison. So, um, and, uh, so we have this chart. So we have prepared actually a chart as a comparison between the between the two things so uh, but between the two amplifiers there are the main differences in it but we also talked about let's say the differences you only see and uh, um, you only see if you look in the inside of the products so I guess we talked a lot about the differences between these two okay well I'm afraid time's up so we have to close the webinar so thanks everyone for participating. Thanks for your questions. Anything that we haven't answered, we will do that offline and send towards you. So any last words, Roland? Um, thank you very much for uh, listening. Thank you for taking the time. Hopefully it was very interesting and you learn a lot for, let's say, selling these products. We would be very happy, of course. Um, yeah, thanks to you, Frederick. Thanks to Philip the, behind the camera in here in Netetal. Um, and till next time, see you. Bye for now.